everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the tail boom assembly for the Tron 5.5. Um, as always, if you've been following along with the previous videos, we have successfully um, built and assembled the main rotor. And we've also went through the tail build, which you can see I've got sitting here. So for the next step, what they're going to have us do is we're going to assemble the tail into the tail boom. So you're going to want to go ahead and get out your amazing, oddly shaped, but really awesome tail boom, which we got sitting right here. Um, for this step, you're going to also need the, the tail push rod because they made up a little bit of a, of a like a jig, if you will. And, and this will make more sense here in just a couple minutes as we do the assembly. But go ahead and get out the bag that's got the little block in it with the two nuts. And then it also has the um, push rod guide support on the bottom. Um, I have not fully built this thing yet, so this is going to be a little bit interesting. Um, because when I look through the manual, it looks like it, it might take a little bit of patience to do this. So with that being said, excuse me, I got the hiccups. With that being said, jump over here real quick with me um, on screen real fast. And you'll notice, okay, so even in the manual, it actually says for this, for this step, you will need a little bit of patience. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing how this is going to go. But from what it looks like is, so they have this block that they've designed that's going to hold these two nylon locking nuts. Um, we're going to put the push rod in there, and that's going to act as a, a lever, so to speak, um, so that we can insert this down inside the uh, tail boom. And uh, let's see here, as we scroll down, okay, here's a better depiction here. So um, we're going to use this to put it down inside so that uh, we can go ahead and fasten on the, 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 the push rod guide support here. Um, and we're going to fasten in these screws. And then after that part is done, so this is, this is going to be interesting. Again, I'm, I'm going I'm to play around with this and try to find the best technique possible. But essentially, once you get that in there, you'll just go ahead and pull the, the little block that they made right off. That should fasten this down. After that, everything should be done. Um, we can then go on and move forward and assemble on the actual tail assembly. So, first step first, guys, what I'm going to do, oh, sorry, I went a little bit past that, is I'm going to focus on doing this part first. Now, in my kit, if we jump back over here to the camera, in my kit, again, it comes um, prepackaged like this. I can see that the uh, the lock wash or the lock nuts, the, the nylon locking nuts, are already like like pre-installed in there. I'm gonna assume they're just like a loose fit or something like that. And um, then you've got the guide support and the two little screws. So I'm gonna get all that unpackaged, okay? And then I'm gonna do as the manual suggests, and we'll go ahead and and use our little uh, push push rod here. Which again is really good quality too, I just have to add, I mean it doesn't really have, I'm trying to flex it, it doesn't have too much flex, so I feel like this one's going to hold up really well. But let me let me go ahead and attempt this step, you guys, and, and then um, we'll, we'll come back and do a review on uh, the finished assembly, and we'll talk about whether it is actually that difficult or not, but to me it looks to be pretty pretty easy and pretty basic. So let me go ahead and get this step done, and we will come back and we will move forward. Okay guys, so just quick tip, uh, quick information here. Um, I actually had to play around with this for a couple of minutes. Um, thing number one, okay, so you are going to need a uh, 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. Let's see if we can get that on there. I'm using the, the Scorpion brand. Um, I was kind of thinking that it might use the, the 2.0, but it doesn't. But anyways, um, one thing you don't want to do, okay, so once, once you uh, feed in the, the push rod and you get that little bracket sat down on there, all I did was I kind of just lightly tightened in one and then got the other one to where it was a snug fit. Um, I made the mistake of then removing the bracket off and then the bolts were still loose and I had no way to get to them. So I have actually sat here for the last couple of minutes fishing this in and out and in and out trying to get back onto those bolts. So it is a little bit tricky to do. So I do like that they warn you to have patience with it. But my best tip would be is, is once you get the, the, the little block sat down in there, um, all I did was I just kind of held it tight against the boom down here like with, with one of my fingers. 
and then just go ahead and tighten your bolts as tight as you can. I mean, don't don't strip them or anything, but but get them nice and tight. Again, they do have the 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 lock nut on the back side, but you basically you don't want to remove the little block tool until these are fully tightened. If not, it is a pain in the butt. So now that mine is fully tightened, um, as the manual specifies, all you really do is you just kind of push down back here. Kind of gives you a little bit of a snap, I guess. And it'll pull that right out. And then um, just make sure you keep this because in the future, I don't know if, uh, you know, if you crash or have to replace a tail boom or something. I don't know if the tail booms are going to come with a spare one of these. I would hope that they do. But if they don't, just keep your original one from your kit because you'll need this in the event of having to do any repair work. So now that we've got that on, everything looks really good. Uh, let's see how this fits in there. Slide that bad boy in. I mean, it's got uh, this is actually a really cool um, tail push rod guide. I really love how it's got. Um, I don't know if you could consider that a double redundancy. I mean, let's see if we can get this up here so you guys can actually see it. Um, but the way that it hugs on there is is kind of unique. I really like that. Most helicopters just have that one little O ring that goes around the tail boom and slides through, whereas this one has like a hug from each side. So kind of cool. Pretty excited about that, but uh, yep, so we got this step complete. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, and uh, now that this part is done, guys, let's go ahead and let's move on. Alrighty, guys, so we've went ahead and we have assembled in the tail push rod guide support. Uh, very unique experience for me. Haven't ran through this kind of a, a assembly quite yet, so it was fun. It actually was kind of fun. It was a bit of a puzzle, but... I really like the way it looks uh, after all. I think it's a pretty good design. So moving forward, let's jump over to the screen real fast. And you'll see here, uh, as we left off, which would have been uh, our last part here, right? So we got everything done. Now, what it wants you to actually do is, is take in mind, um, it's going to have you mix up a two-component epoxy, as stated here. And I'll go over the epoxy options with you here in just a moment. Um, it's going to have us do like an epoxy thread kind of thing, and this is pretty common on most machines these days. It gives us our specifications. I'm going to wait to make up my tail push rod um, because I usually do that when I'm doing the programming and everything on the flat barless system. However, if you wish to go ahead and do yours, here's all the specifications you need um, as far as distances and everything. Please take in mind, um, actually jump back over to the bench real quick. Take in mind, if you're going to go ahead and assemble your tail push rod ends now, and by now I mean you're going to epoxy them on and screw in your links and everything, um, you're going to want to go ahead and thread your uh, tail push rod through this uh, God, or God, guide rod support, sorry, can't talk today, and then go ahead and do your epoxy. And the reason I say this is for two different things. Thing one is, once you get your epoxy and everything set, this actually works really good as a little support bracket to where you can let your epoxy dry without it being disturbed or bothered. Um, what I usually used to do with, with a lot of the helis that have this is I would get like two tools and I would set the rod on the tool so that it could, it could dry and harden up. Um, but this works really well. Um, the other option you have... Um, if you don't want to run into any issues, is I did find that, that, that this does have some leniency. So let's say I make up my push rod right now, and I do all my ends, it's all epoxied, and now all of a sudden I can't jimmy it in there. You can actually put it in at a straight angle like this, and then just simply turn it, boom, and then it fits right in. So whatever you guys prefer to do. So I had discovered that this method right here allows me to release it. Do that one more time, just set it straight, turn it, boom, it's locked in. So I'm going to make up the epoxy and everything later on when I do my programming uh, for my fly barless system and everything. For this particular video, we did need to have this rod available in order to do this. Um, so also take in mind that if you do have an incident in the future where maybe you have a crash or something and you've got to replace your boom, um, you're going to need to have a spare push rod laying around to use the tool. So a little bit of a con, I'm, I'm not going to say that's my most favorite design on, on the planet right now, 
but as always, flight performance and, and everything else far outweighs some of the negatives. So we've got that to this point. Okay, let's jump back over to the screen real quick. And okay, so we just talked about all this, all the tail push rod stuff. You guys, if you want to make yours up now, feel free to do so. I'm going to wait. Um, next step is going to be the actual tail assembly and getting um, the rudder part assembled down to the boom. Now, I really like the design on this because it does have the two metal plates and the screws that follow. We'll want to go ahead and get the tail fin out. Um, with this being more of, uh, instead of just like a simple, you know, circle boom, since it's got more of a, of a shape to it, the, the, uh, the tail belt should just be able to drop right through. But if you need to, a good trick is you can always throw some zip ties on the end and push it through. One thing that I can um, say that I've done over the years is I'll usually get a piece of dental floss and tie it to the end of the tail belt and just drop a toothpick all the way down and pull it through. Uh, whatever you guys got to do, but uh, um, as depicted here, we'll go ahead and we'll feed the belt through on the end with the holes. And we'll fasten these down. Of course, we'll lock tight them. We'll get this. Um, the nice thing is about this design too, guys, is you don't have to worry about doing the, the back and forth 90 degree kind of thing as far as making sure that the tail case is centered because the holes are pre-drilled so the tail should be 90 degrees and level with the body uh, especially the output shaft I enjoy that a lot um, one of my least favorite things to do when building helis is, is dilly dallying back and forth with the tail and trying to get it perfect um, if you watch some of my previous videos I use like a pitch gauge and stuff to do that but uh, we don't have to worry about that here so we'll go ahead and I'm gonna do that step here in just a quick moment and then uh, moving on in the instructions, it does talk to you about here for best tail authority performance. You'll want to adjust the center position on the fly barless controller um, to show as the illustration shows. Now this is really important, guys. Um, when I program most of my fly barless systems on other helicopter brands, usually I'll collapse my, my uh, rudder blades and I'll adjust my link rod uh, mechanically after 90ing my servo, of course, but I'll adjust the linkage rod to where I have zero degrees of pitch on, on the rudder. Some people don't like that. Of course, it doesn't have any counter torque for the main rotor. This I understand. But on most machines, it gives you a full even throw. And the way this one's designed, which I have confirmed, is when you're at a 90 degree with your uh, link arm here, it's going to give you a little bit of pitch to counter torque, uh, or to counter the torque of the main rotor. So your, your fly barless programming might be a little bit different, but pay more attention to this here than you do with the zero degrees on the rudder blades. Just something I picked up, guys, I found kind of interesting as I was um, going through the process of building this. And then after that, it starts getting into the, the, the cyclic servos and the arms. Um, again, that stuff I'm not going to worry about until I start to actually get the construction of the main frames and everything done. So it looks like that's about it, guys. Let me go ahead and finish up these final build steps here, and we will come back and we'll do a final review. Alrighty, guys, so here we go. We've got ourselves the final tail boom assembly for the Tron 5.5. Um, as you can see, I've got my belt threaded through. There's quite a bit of slack on this end. Of course, this will be going around the gear, and we'll talk about how to twist it and everything um, as we get to that point. We've got our tail push rod assembly, or guide, if you will, fully assembled on there, nice and snug. Again, as stated previously, I did not epoxy yet my, um, my linkages and everything on. Hey, and uh, one thing, too, guys, I was going to talk to you about is with the epoxy. It calls out for a two-part epoxy. Um, on a lot of helicopter builds, it's pretty common that the tail push rod has epoxy in some way, shape, or form on the ends. Um, I haven't seen too many nowadays that don't. I, I don't know why that is, but it is what it is. But um, I've been using this JB Clear Weld Quick Set Epoxy for a little while now. And uh, it seems to hold up pretty damn good. I've never had any breaks or any slips, so that's what I'll be using. Um, if that's not quite up your alley, um, another good one is these guys here where you have to actually pre-mix them. Again, they're like, a, I think these are a 15-minute cure. I mean, you still want to let them sit 24 hours, but, I mean, they, they cure up really fast, so you can actually mix the epoxies and, 
and uh, and do what you got to do glue wise so that's an option there but again I'll do that for a later video um, let's flip this bad boy around I went ahead and got the tail fully assembled again this thing actually goes together really well I'm, I'm very excited about it because um, I really like how they use the metal plates here on the sides um, just uh, take in mind also when you guys are assembling this it does specify it in the manual the screws on the side of the output shaft are shorter whereas the screws that are going to hold on the tail fin are slightly longer of course because of the carbon fiber here so make sure you take into um, consideration that but I went ahead and loctited these in fastened everything down and now I've got my fully assembled tail system so I can sit here and play with the belt and everything so this thing is ready to be installed into the helicopter guys so follow me on the next video we're going to start construction on the mainframe we'll get into servo installation uh, uh, motor install ESC install all the, all the good stuff so um, as always guys thank you so much for watching and supporting my YouTube channel and as always my friends if Freddy can fly so can you